Greetings, the Hijabi Gamer here, and with Season of the Splicer coming to the end to an end on Tuesday, I thought now was a good time as any to give you my final thoughts on the season. Um, if you did see my live stream on Sunday in particular, I did talk about it with a friend, and, but this is like it all summed into one clear, cohesive spot. Now, um, as we can see, we're in the helm of you know the whole hub for emergency logistics um overall i was disappointed by the season there's some things i did like about it don't get me wrong but overall i was deeply disappointed by the season and it could be summed up in my experience on saturday so all during the week i hadn't played destiny 2 but i had a friend contact me he sent me a couple messages where he's like he's a big future war cult fan and he was telling me oh lakshmi 2 is dead and the factions have left the city and I was like what but I really a lot was going on so I didn't get to play destiny 2 until Saturday so I log into destiny 2 and there's the miss this mission saying Lakshmi 2 has let the vex into the city um you need to battle the vex to protect the city so I got really really excited normally I don't start live streaming for two hours I give myself a couple of hours to play first early to do the grindy stuff, the boring stuff that really wouldn't be boring on a live stream. But I was like, you know what? This is going to be awesome. Protect the city from the facts. I immediately started live streaming at 6.30 in the morning. I was really excited. You know, we're going to get to fight the facts. You know, I thought it would be something along the, along the lines of, you know, the Red War. The first mission in the Red War where you're fighting through the tower, the old tower, fighting Cabal. You know, we'd be running through the city, protecting people from the Vex. Instead, we got an override mission. Wow. I mean, I started live streaming it because I thought it would be awesome. Instead, it was an override mission. And at one point, I was live streaming on Saturday, and someone pointed out, they're like, you know, Lakshmi 2's body is in the override mission. And I was like, it is? Where? No. They're like, yeah, at the beginning. I'm like, it is? And I actually ran back to the beginning of the override. And sure enough, there's Lakshmi 2 on the ground. I was like, wait, what? So not only did we not get to see her, you no know, cut scenes with Lakshmi 2, you know, maybe letting the Vex in, which don't even get me started on that. But no cut We didn't see a beloved character who's been in Destiny since the beginning get killed off. Now, I personally have never... I've not been a really big faction person. I've always considered myself more loyal to Cade 6 and the Vanguard. But I can understand why fans of Future War Cult are pissed. This was a character that's been around... A beloved character who's been around for years. And you just off-screen kill her off and leave her on... You, you don't even point it out. You don't even have ghosts say something at the beginning of the mission like... Hey... There's Lakshmi 2's body. Maybe we shouldn't run all over it. Add the fact that, honestly, the behavior just doesn't fit. Okay, fine. Maybe she was corrupted by Savathun. But do I really think Lakshmi 2 on her own would let the Vex into the city? No. No. She's trying to protect the city from what she believes is a threat. No. She might have gotten her allies in the future war cult to, you know... Throw the Vex, the throw the Fallen out. But inviting the Vex into the city and getting Osiris on her side. Osiris, the guy who has been living for years in the infinite forest. To allow the Vex into... Yeah. So, this whole thing with this final override mission, which could have been something really awesome, was cut down to another override mission and a cutscene. And it was a cutscene, like a fighting cutscene where Zavala and Amanda Holiday just... No. Though, why is Amanda Holiday fighting? I love Amanda Holiday, but Amanda Holiday is the shipwright. I could understand why she was in the Red War, because basically... But you should have had, like... You know what it made more sense? Soraya Hawthorne. She's been in combat before. We know she can hold her own. Amanda Holiday, if she's killed off because she's not a guardian... Your ships are... She fixes everyone's ships. 
And where did Zavala come in to all of this? She's basically said almost nothing. But okay, I, just the whole thing was a major, major disappointment. You know, the final mission of the season. And you, you could have used the old assets, used the tower assets, and just added Vex. Instead, it was an override mission. Now, I did like how recently, and someone, I saw a YouTube video about it recently, people were talking about how they like that Bungie has been putting more effort into the story, where you have conversations between characters. They did it in the whole Cabal thing, where you start a mission and you have a long conversation, you end the mission, so you know more about the story through those conversations. That, I did like. They continued that tradition in this season as well. So that was, that added to the story. Of course, that says nothing about the quality of the story, but at least they made the effort to try to tell the story. So that's a positive thing about the season. But then there was just these override missions. Were they fun? A little at first. But honestly, the override missions were more gambit light. I mean, first of all, you did not need six people to do an override mission. That made them become really grindy and really, really tedious. I mean, maybe if you had two different difficulties or you cut it down to four people. But this got just really, really tedious. Where it was like just over and over again, the exact just you didn't need six people, at least with Gambit. You're competing not only with another team. But you're competing with your fellow guardians on your own team. Where it's like, who can get the most moats? You know, who can get the most kills? In this case, what's the point? You know, what matters if you get the moats or somebody else gets the moats and dumps, dunks them in there? I mean, the only reason collecting the moats in the overrides mattered at all for me was at one point I needed to do so for uh, seasonal challenges. But once I got the seasonal challenge, it was like, whatever, you know. Take them. I don't care. So these override missions just got really, really tedious. The expunge ones, okay. If you had a few more, it would be more interesting. But yeah, I like the expunge missions. But the override ones became just tedious and repetitive. And to end the season on an override mission, just really, really boring. As for the story... Don't get me wrong. I like the fact that, you know, we've turning to the Fallen and, you know, we brought back, they brought back Mithrax, the captain from, you know, that mission where the captain leaves you the generator and all that. I miss Titan, by the way. But I think what really turned me off of the season was the whole conversation with Saint-14, where it's like they're turning you into like the bad guy. It's like, oh, you mean, horrible guardians. You killed Fallen. Oh, Saint-14, you brutal, blood-lust, hungry. It's like, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. The Fallen invaded our solar system. The Fallen have killed millions of humans. And all of a sudden, you think strapping bug-eyed little bungee baby Yodas to them will make us feel bad for it? No, I, I feel, abs I, I got tired of the guilt trip where it's like, no, I feel absolutely no guilt for killing Fallen. They invaded our solar system. They came in guns blazing. They still, I mean, yeah, people are like, oh, well, it's not House Light who are killing, who are shooting at you in the Cosmodrome or, you know, in the EDZ. I get that. But there hasn't been a single Fallen that ran away and you just gunned them down. And there's never been any children. On, I mean, if they brought their kids to the battlefield, I hate to say it, but it's on them. But no. So this whole guilt trip that, oh, you horrible guardians, you killed Elixni. They're Elixni now. Um, really got tedious. I mean, no, no guilt at all. No guilt. We did our duty to protect humans. And to protect our solar system. Our home. And then you're like, oh well. You killed Fallen. You killed those poor, poor Fallen. Who were just trying to find a place to stay. After their planet was destroyed by the darkness. It would have been different if the Fallen had approached our solar system. And said, hey, we, you know, we're refugees. We need help. Instead it was, they came in, guns blazing. They steal our stuff. You know, 
They didn't ask for help, they took it. So I got really tired of the whole guilt-trippy guardians um, and the, the funky Baby Yoda. Um, yeah. And apparently you could get a stuffy of those four. I mean, a lot. They're everywhere now. Uh, you know, these. They're also all over the, um, the, the, the Elixney quarter. So it's like, are they getting jiggy with it? I mean, just put it that way. You know, are we, are we got, do we got like fallen, um, not going to say anymore because this is on YouTube. Um, I liked, like I said, I liked the conversations, but after a while I started to tune them out because they became butt kissing love fests where Ikor is constantly praising Mithrax and Mithrax is cost. It's like, at what, you know, the conversations just got. So after the whole guilt trip, it was, oh, oh, Mithrax, it's so wonderful. We're working together. Oh, Ikora, let us unite behind the light, dear God. Like I said, I started to tune them out. Where it's like, I'm beginning to seriously think Ikora has a thing for Mithrax. And Mithrax has a thing for Ikora. Once you go forearms, you don't go back. Wow. The constant butt kissing between Saint 14 Osiris, o Ikora. And Mithrax, the constant praising each other, got so, it became nauseating. Where it was just ridiculously nauseating. Where it's like, isn't it wonderful we're working together? Oh, you're so wonderful, Mithrax, to help us. Oh, Ikora, you're so wonderful to understand. God, just, I started to actually tune them out. So, honestly, there are parts that I just, I got sick of it. I got sick of the constant butt kissing. Or it's like, did you run out of imagination? Um, honestly, I thought, given I had heard rumors of Siva coming back, that Mithrax was only pretending to be an ally, and he was actually doing it, and it was going to end with him finding out where the Siva is. But I'm going to make a video that shows the Cosmodrome shows no signs of Rise of Iron at all. Like, you know, the big chunk missing from the Cosmodrome isn't there. So, yeah, I can understand why Sepix, maybe they managed to purge the Siva from him. The, you know, the giant. But did they fix the Cosmodrome? So I should have realized that sooner in the season, but I never really looked because I just assumed that they would keep with Rise of Iron. But instead, they it's almost like Rise of Iron never happened. So now I'm... Well, now that the season is over, we know Mithrax isn't secretly trying to find Siva. But just the between the guilt trip and the constant praising of each other, I did not... I mean, I like the idea of working with the Fallen, but the execution was nauseating. And Osiris just I don't know so I feel like they got lazy too like I said they could have done an amazing override uh, final mission instead they did an override mission um they took gambit light and, and called it override missions there was some creativity but overall I'm just really disappointed I mean also let me say this it didn't take nearly as much grind to completely so I've fully unlocked the splicer um i managed to fully unlock it so the warmind bunkers i got i stopped playing the warmind bunkers got so tedious but this i managed to fully unlock it so it wasn't it was it got it was a lot but i was able to finish it with time to spare um so that was good um that i have to admit was good but, and you know, I agree with the guy I was talking to on Sunday that this next season is just going to be filler until the season of the Witch King. Or, anyway, those are my thoughts on the season. Um, doubt Bungie's even going to notice it, but just wanted to put it out there. Um, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you in the tower. As always, I will be on Xbox on Saturday and PlayStation on Sunday. And I try to get to PC during the week.